at the time of diagnosis, we have a thought process about not only what's to come with an operation, but what is to come with all aspects of treatment. Uh, we're able to give the patient a roadmap uh, for all those aspects of treatment uh, as opposed to just the surgery part of things. And sometimes that means I'm going to talk to them about what comes next, which may not be an operation. It may be chemotherapy or radiation as the next step in treatment and then an operation to follow. Uh, and I, uh, I think that uh, we, uh, as a specialty, are good at giving the patients that expectation from the start of treatment to the end of treatment, even if that doesn't include, uh, even if those are things that don't include surgery. We have here at UNC one of the very few centers at the, uh, in the nation, uh, a unit that is able to deliver radiation intraoperatively. And so for certain malignancies uh, and recurrent rectal cancer is one of those, uh, we have developed a, a program and a level of expertise uh, to take care of those patients. And that involves surgery, it involves radiation, before surgery commonly. It involves radiation in the operating room. Uh, and our data would suggest that uh, that improves the, the chance of somebody doing well after that operation. We've used that intraoperative radiation in other areas as well, and I think it has a role to play. Uh, it provides us the advantage of being able to give higher doses of radiation to a focal area and uh, hopefully be able to destroy minute uh, focuses of cancer uh, and improve our outcomes down the road after surgery. So I think there are, with regard to the evolution of, of what we do over the last 10 years, I think there are three things that I would uh, comment on. One is, as I mentioned earlier, the level of detail we get from uh, imaging before surgery has clearly impacted what we do. Uh, the, uh, our selection of patients for operations is better. Uh, we're able to um, be more precise about planning for what we're going to do instead of determining what we're going to do intraoperatively. The second is what we do in the operating room. The level of technology at our disposal uh, is has significantly increased in the last 10 to 15 years, which help us uh, avoid post-operative complications, which help us decrease bleeding in the operating room, uh, and generally have uh, helped us improve outcomes as a whole. The third is minimally invasive surgery, and that is uh, true for both things in the GI tract, like laparoscopic approaches to surgery, uh, as well as things like melanoma and breast cancer, where uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy has eliminated the need for extensive operations uh, on lymph nodes in many patients. Uh, and so the trend in general is to less invasive surgery uh, over the last 15 years, and that's far and away been the biggest advance uh, in surgical treatment of patients with cancer uh, in that time frame. I think there are a few things. One is uh, the uh, aspect of cancer care that, that could broadly fall under the category of personalized care. This is what will happen in the future. We'll take a biopsy of a tumor and uh, we will evaluate that tumor and it won't just be one treatment for pancreas cancer, for instance. It'll be multiple treatments for pancreas cancer depending on what we know about your tumor, what we find out about your tumor. Uh, I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that's coming in all of cancer care and it's going to impact uh, surgery as a whole. The other part of things I think are on ongoing evolution of technology in surgery. Things like our surgical robots, I think that these have been in the news recently, and um, telesurgery, not just telemedicine, but telesurgery, where somebody uh, may hook the machine up to the patient, but somebody at a remote site operates on them. These are things that are starting to happen in the military. Um, probably will happen elsewhere, too. Uh, and as technology grows, we want to be part of that. I personally try and make sure I talk to my colleagues helping, take, to, helping to take care of patients uh, on the telephone at least once after I've seen patients and then again usually after surgery uh, so that we can develop a group plan. Uh, and I found that, that many of the referring physicians really do appreciate hearing our discussions from the Multidisciplinary Tumor Board, hearing the discussions uh, that we've had and hearing the group opinion about things when in putting a plan together and helping to carry them out uh, for the patients closer to home. 
being able to sit down with a patient uh, and have a conversation with them and have them leave with a better understanding about things after they've talked to me is incredibly, uh, incredibly rewarding. Uh, and that's the, the, the most interesting part of my job and the thing that, that keeps me going.